Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today, we find ourselves the target of punitive tariffs on Canadian aluminum and steel under pretext of a 232 national security provision. Let me be clear. These tariffs are totally unacceptable. For 150 years, Canada has been the United States' most steadfast ally. Soyons clairs, ces tarifs douaniers sont inacceptables. Au cours des 150 dernières années, le Canada a été le partenaire le plus solide des États-Unis. Les Canadiens et les Américains se sont battus côte à côte lors de deux guerres mondiales et en Corée. Des plages de la Normandie aux montagnes de l'Afghanistan, nous nous sommes battus ensemble et nous avons pleuré la perte des nôtres ensemble. Et les forces canadiennes œuvrent toujours aux côtés des Américains. Nous sommes des partenaires du NORAD, de l'OTAN et partout dans le monde. Nous nous sommes portés à la défense des États-Unis après le 11 septembre, tout comme les Américains se sont portés à notre défense par le passé. Et nous nous battons ensemble contre le Daesh dans le nord de l'Irak. Canadians have served alongside Americans in two world wars and in Korea. From the beaches of Normandy to the mountains of Afghanistan, we have fought and died together. Canadian personnel are serving alongside Americans at this very moment. We are partners in NORAD, NATO, and around the world. We came to America's aid after 9-11, as Americas have come to our aid in the past, and we're fighting together against Daesh in northern Iraq. The numbers are clear. The United States has a two billion US dollar surplus in steel trade with Canada. And Canada buys more American steel than any other country in the world. Indeed, we account for half of US exports, US steel exports. Canada is a secure supplier of aluminum and steel to the US defense industry, putting aluminum in American planes and steel in American tanks. That Canada could be considered a national security threat to the United States is inconceivable. These tariffs will harm industry and workers on both sides of the Canada-US border, disrupting linked supply chains that have made North American steel and aluminum more competitive all around the world. Ces tarifs douaniers nuiront aux industries et aux travailleurs des deux côtés de la frontière canado-américaine et perturberont les chaînes d'approvisionnement qui ont rendu l'acier et l'aluminium nord-américains plus compétitifs à travers le monde. Beyond that, these tariffs are an affront to the long-standing security partnership between Canada and the United States, and in particular, an affront to the thousands of Canadians who have fought and died alongside their American brothers in arms, com comrades in arms. The ties of commerce, friendship, and in many cases, family between Americans and Canadians are undiminished. Indeed, they have never been stronger. The government is, of Canada is confident that shared values, geography, and common interests will ultimately overcome protectionism. But as we have constantly said, we will always protect Canadian workers and Canadian interests. Minister Freeland is here to outline our retaliatory measures. This morning, I called the opposition leaders to info inform them of our response. Comme nous l'avons toujours dit, nous protégerons toujours les intérêts des travailleurs canadiens et du Canada. Le ministre, la ministre Freeland est ici pour annoncer nos mesures de représailles. Et ce matin, j'ai appelé les leaders de l'opposition pour les aviser de notre réponse. Pour terminer, Je veux être très clair sur un point. Les Américains demeurent nos partenaires, nos alliés et nos amis. Le peuple américain ne fait pas l'objet de l'annonce d'aujourd'hui. 
nous devons croire qu'éventuellement, le bon sens triomphera. Mais malheureusement, les actions prises aujourd'hui par le gouvernement américain ne semblent pas aller dans cette direction. In closing, I want to be very clear about one thing. Americans remain our partners, our allies, and our friends. This is not about the American people. We have to believe that at some point, common sense will prevail. But we see no sign of that in this action today by the U.S. administration. Thank you, Prime Minister. As the Prime Minister has said, these tariffs are totally unacceptable. En réponse à ces mesures, le Canada entend imposer des surtaxes ou d'autres mesures similaires visant à restreindre le commerce sur des importations d'acier, d'aluminium et d'autres produits provenant des États-Unis, et ce à un montant allant jusqu'à 6,6 milliards de dollars. Ce montant représente le total des exportations canadiennes en 2017 d'acier et d'aluminium vers les États-Unis, ces exportations étant maintenant affectées par des tarifs américains. Nous publions aujourd'hui deux listes de produits assujettis aux contre-mesures. Les produits sur la première liste seront assujettis à une surtaxe de 25 ou à une mesure similaire visant à restreindre le commerce. Les produits sur la deuxième liste seront assujettis à une surtaxe de 10 ou une mesure similaire visant à restreindre le commerce. Ces contre-mesures s'appliqueront seulement aux produits originaires des États-Unis. Ces contre-mesures prendront effet le 1er juillet 2018 et resteront en vigueur jusqu'à ce que les États-Unis éliminent leurs tarifs sur les produits canadiens d'acier et d'aluminium. Nos travailleurs de l'acier et d'aluminium ont notre soutien. C'est pourquoi nous avons inclus les produits américains d'acier et d'aluminium dans nos listes. Et pour les autres produits énumérés aujourd'hui, nous avons veillé à ce que ceux-ci puissent être facilement obtenus auprès des entreprises canadiennes ou partenaires commerciaux non américains, afin d'éviter que les coûts ne soient répercutés sur les familles et les consommateurs canadiens. Nous entamons aujourd'hui une période de consultation du 15 jours avec les Canadiens afin qu'ils puissent exprimer leur soutien ou leur inquiétude à l'égard des contre-mesures proposées et de la liste des produits. Ces listes de produits seront mises à la disposition du public immédiatement et en ligne pour les Canadiens. Ces restrictions commerciales unilatérales pour les, par les États-Unis contreviennent aussi aux règles commerciales de l'ALENA et de l'OMC. Le Canada lancera des procédures de règlement des différends en vertu du chapitre 20 de l'ALENA et du mémorandum d'accord sur le règlement des différends de l'OMC. Le Canada collabora aussi étroitement avec des membres de l'OMC partageant les mêmes vues, y compris l'Union européenne, pour contester ces mesures américaines illégal et contre-productive à l'OMC. Il est tout à fait inapproprié de considérer tout commerce avec le Canada comme une menace pour la sécurité nationale des États-Unis. Et je veux que les Canadiens sachent que leur gouvernement défendra toujours les travailleurs canadiens et les entreprises canadiennes. Je vous remercie. Non, je vais dire en anglais maintenant. We are a bilingual country. 
Uh, in response to these measures, Canada intends to impose tariffs against imports of steel, aluminum, and other products from the United States, representing the total value of 2017 Canadian exports affected by the U.S. measures. That is $16.6 .6 billion. We are imposing dollar-for-dollar -dollar tariffs for every dollar levied against Canadians by the U.S. 25% and 10% are the tariff rates today imposed by the United States on Canada. We are today publishing two lists of goods, one list which will be subject to a 25% tariff, the second list will be subject to a 10% tariff. These countermeasures will only apply to goods originating from the United States. These countermeasures will take effect on July 1, 2018. They will remain in place until the United States eliminates its trade restrictive measures against Canada. Our steel and aluminum workers have our government's full support. That is why we have included American steel and aluminum products in our list. As for the other products listed today, we have ensured that these can be easily sourced from Canadian companies or non-U.S. trade partners in an effort to avoid any costs being passed on to Canadian families and consumers. We are today beginning a 15-day consultation period with Canadians so that they may express their support for or concerns about the proposed countermeasures and the lists of goods. These lists of goods will be made available publicly immediately including online for all Canadians. The unilateral trade restrictions by the United States are also in violation of NAFTA and WTO trade rules. Canada will therefore launch dispute settlement proceedings under NAFTA Chapter 20 and WTO dispute settlement. Canada will also closely collaborate with like-minded WTO members, including the European Union, to challenge these illegal and counterproductive U.S. measures at the WTO. It is entirely inappropriate to view any trade with Canada as a national security threat to the United States, as the Prime Minister has explained. I want Canadians to know that our government will always stand up for Canadian workers and Canadian businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, first question, Philippe Vincent Foisy, Radio Canada. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau. Um, visiblement, votre stratégie qui est en place depuis uh, plusieurs mois uh, semble avoir uh, du plomb dans l'aile. Est-ce que là, avec les mesures que vous venez d'annoncer, vous enclenchez une guerre commerciale avec les États-Unis? D'abord, uh, on dit depuis longtemps uh, qu'on était prêt pour tout. Euh, on est en train, euh, on a toujours été en train de travailler de façon constructive avec les Américains, mais on a aussi souligné euh, qu'on avait euh, euh, des réflexions sur comment nous allions pouvoir assurer la défense des, Cana de, des Canadiens, des travailleurs canadiens et du Canada euh, si le besoin arrivait. Alors, bien qu'on continue euh, de travailler et de négocier, d'essayer de, de, de convaincre les Américains euh, de reculer sur euh, ces mesures inacceptables, euh, nous devons aussi euh, répondre fermement euh, sur euh, ces menaces qui euh, nous sont imposées. Mais, mais par rapport à la guerre commerciale, est-ce qu'on ouvre une guerre commerciale en ce moment? Et... Avez-vous toujours confiance en M. Trump? Vous disiez, je respecte, sa, je crois, sa parole et on n'aura pas de tarif. M. Sanderson Cooper est là, visiblement, de détail. Bien, euh, évidemment, euh, ça fait longtemps que nous sommes engagés euh, avec les Américains de bien des façons, que ce soit moi directement avec M. Trump, que ce soit euh, Christian Freeland et les autres ministres qui s'engagent, que ce soit les premiers ministres euh, des provinces qui sont engagés, les, les chefs d'opposition, euh, les euh, gens d'affaires au Canada. On est continuellement en train d'être engagé pour mettre de la pression et de, pour souligner euh, aux Américains à quel point ce serait une mauvaise idée euh, de créer des barrières tarifières ou autres avec le Canada. Euh, la décision d'aujourd'hui appartient entièrement à l'administration américaine. Euh, ça a été leur choix euh, de commencer euh, et d'imposer euh, ces mesures euh, inacceptables. Et donc, nous répondons, comme je l'ai toujours dit très clairement euh, au président Trump, nous allions toujours être là pour défendre les intérêts des Canadiens et des travailleurs canadiens. Joyce Napier, CTV. Good negotiations began, you launched a diplomatic blitz in the United States. You've been there, what, 15, 16 times, Minister Freeland, I don't know, maybe 100. Um, 
and, and your surrogates were there, and you made nice with the White House, and you went all over the United States. Is it time to change the Canadian strategy? It's very clear that uh, we've said, and I've been saying directly to Canadians for a number of months now, that we have to be prepared for anything. And uh, we have been. Uh, we have always chosen to try and be uh, positive and constructive. But at the same time, in my conversations with the President, in uh, Canadians' conversations with uh, their American friends, colleagues and counterparts, uh, the message has been very clear. The Canadians stand united. The Canadians are firm about standing up for Canada's interests. Uh, the American administration has made a decision today that we deplore uh, and obviously is going to lead to retaliatory measures, as it must, uh, but we regret that. We would much rather move together uh, in partnership, understanding that no two countries have economies as interwoven and mutually beneficial as Canada and the United States. You're hosting the G7 in a week. Mr. Trump will be there, the American, the, the European allies, the EU will be there. So are you, how is this going to work out? Uh, obviously, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, done a lot of work to pull people together around uh, common and shared themes at the G7, whether it's protecting our oceans or empowering uh, women to be more successful in the workforce or addressing the economic challenges that happen uh, at home and around the world. Uh, every single G7 country is facing a similar challenge of demonstrating that growth can work for everyone. In Canada, we talk about growth for the middle class and those working hard to join it, uh, but uh, that is a similar uh, challenge and responsibility for each and every one of our elected G7 colleagues. Uh, that approach uh, is one that we're going to continue to emphasize. Uh, the choices made by the United States administration today uh, you know, have uh, a, a goal of benefiting uh, American workers. Uh, unfortunately, we all know that this is going to lead to harm for American workers and American industries. Our economies are too interlinked uh, to not have significant disruption uh, in American families and American communities uh, south of the border. We are going to continue to highlight that working together uh, as friends and allies uh, is extremely important for the prosperity of each of our citizens. Uh, indeed, uh, when you look at what the United States has chosen to do to its closest friends and allies, uh, G7 nations, European allies, Canada, Mexico, uh, it, it shows that uh, we need to have a, uh, uh, an opportunity to come together to discuss this directly and firmly and look for opportunities to benefit our citizens, uh, not to harm them. Raymond Fillon, TVA. L'approche de l'administration, et j'ai eu euh, des conversations avec euh, le président et le vice-président cette semaine euh, pour souligner qu'ils euh, ils sont... Euh, euh, ils ont une approche euh, ancrée euh, dans une idéologie qui euh, veut aider les Américains, mais euh, qu'ils qu ne comprennent tout à fait pas, pas tout à fait que euh, ça va... Euh, faire mal à les Américains. Ça va faire mal à des travailleurs, ça va faire leur mal à leurs industries. Euh, on a passé un an à souligner à quel point euh, les, la connectivité euh, et les connexions entre nos deux économies euh, sont euh, au profit des citoyens dans nos deux pays. Maintenant, malheureusement, je pense qu'ils vont découvrir qu'ils euh, ne peuvent pas faire des mesures comme ça sans euh, nuire à, à leurs propres citoyens, à leurs propres travailleurs. Vous avez fait de nombreuses représentations auprès du président, du vice-président encore cette semaine. Qu'est-ce que vous répondez à ceux qui disent aujourd'hui « c'est votre échec »? Je pense que les gens savent très bien que c'est une décision prise par l'administration américaine et pour l'administration américaine. Euh, notre approche, mon approche, l'approche de mon équipe, l'approche de tous les Canadiens a été de travailler ensemble. Euh, et je veux encore une fois remercier tous les différents premiers ministres des provinces, tous les, euh, les députés de tous les partis euh, qui ont démontré qu'on a une approche ferme et unie au Canada sur ces négociations, sur l'engagement avec les États-Unis. Euh, je pense que les gens savent très bien euh, que c'est euh, malgré tous nos efforts que le président américain euh, a choisi de faire, de prendre cette décision aujourd'hui. John Avison, National Post. 
Prime Minister, is Mr. Trump going to be in Charlevoix? Uh, yes, all indications is, are that he will be. Uh, there's a similar national security investigation going on into the import of autos. The finding of the steel and uh, aluminum would suggest this is going to go against Canada too. What's your response to that? Well, we're, we're going to deal with uh, this one today and deal with next steps when uh, and if they come. But as I've highlighted many times, uh, the argument that uh, Canadian steel that is in American armored cars and Canadian uh, aluminum that is in American fighter jets uh, could somehow be a uh, national security risk becomes even more absurd when one tries to apply it to uh, cars or car parts made in Canada. We will continue uh, to make arguments based on logic and common sense and hope that eventually they will prevail against uh, an administration that uh, um, doesn't always align itself around those principles. Katie Simpson, CBC. Prime Minister, when Donald Trump took office, you made a co conscious effort to take the high road, uh, where we saw some European leaders not necessarily take that road. But at the end of the day, you and the Europeans are in the same mess together. Has your, str has your strategy handling Donald Trump worked? I think we all uh, we all know that the relationship between Canada and the United States is a deep and complex one, uh, and uh, engagement and thoughtful uh, approaches combined uh, with the unity and the strength of uh, of the team approach that Canada has highlighted. Uh, I've heard many times from uh, American interlocutors, from uh, the president himself, uh, that the fact that we are firm and united as a country in our engagement with the United States beyond political ideologies here at home uh, has been a strength in our approach, and we are going to continue to stay united in this uh, moment. I know Canadians will be there for one another. Uh, we will do things to stand together and stand up for our interests right across the country. Uh, that's what they expect of this government, but that's also what we expect of each other. Um, in your comments, and my colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you've said Donald Trump's name. Uh, and it takes, it still takes a month for these tariffs to kick in. Are you taking a firm enough line? We heard Kathleen Wynne describe Donald Trump as a bully. Do you agree with that assessment? And is this enough? No, I, I, uh, I've been very clear that my interactions with President Trump have been clear and firm. Uh, we have always, and indeed he, he uh, has always understood that I will uh, and do stand up for Canadian interests and Canadian uh, Canadian uh, workers uh, and Canadian citizens. Uh, this is something that we will always do. I've made it very clear to President Trump, to Donald Trump, uh, to Mr. Trump, I'll say it as many different ways and times as you'd like, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, our relationship goes far beyond uh, the interpersonal dynamic between two individuals. Uh, the connections between Canadians and Americans are deep, broad, multi-layered, multifaceted, uh, commercial, cultural, familial, uh, and those continue. This decision by the U.S. administration will hurt Canadians, it will hurt Americans, uh, and we regret that deeply. Uh, but we'll continue uh, to look for ways to uh, move forward in a way that does not uh, continue to hurt or continue to harm uh, our citizens in both of our countries the way the actions of this administration today have. Tom, yes. Can sorry. I, can I just add one sir. thing? Um, Katie, you asked if these measures are strong enough. And speaking about the measures specifically, uh, the retaliatory actions, uh, this is $16.6 .6 billion of retaliation. Uh, this is the strongest trade action Canada has taken in the post-war era. This is a very strong response. It is a proportionate response. It is perfectly reciprocal. But I really want to assure you and to assure Canadians this is a very strong Canadian action in response to a very bad U.S. decision. Tonda McCharles, Toronto Star. Uh, that partially um, deals with something I want to ask you, though. If, you, if you're targeting about $16.6 .6 billion worth of goods, what analysis, what is your assessment of the impact on the Canadian economy um, 
of all of this. And, and, and Christia can speak to that, but one of the reasons we are a, a country that believes in free trade is that tariff barriers ultimately uh, affect uh, your own citizens most. Uh, this, as we've seen when the American uh, government uh, allowed a moving forward on, uh, on issues around softwood lumber, uh, the costs of housing in the United States for American home buyers increased. Tariffs hurt local consumers. Uh, and as Christia has said, uh, as we put forward our list of, uh, of, uh, of uh, goods that will be subject to retaliatory tariffs, um, we will first of all be consulting with Canadians and industry for 15 days to uh, ensure that there are not uh, unforeseen or unwanted or undesirable consequences for Canadians. But at the same time, efforts have been made to look at goods that have alternatives, either Canadian alternatives or uh, alternatives uh, from countries uh, with whom we have positive trade relationships uh, that will not leave Canadians uh, significantly out of pocket. Christia. Uh, yeah. And um, so, Tonda, if I could, uh, this list is a very carefully considered, very carefully put together list. Uh, we have been working on it for some time. Uh, when the Prime Minister uh, has said that Canada is ready for every eventuality in the past, we have been ready. Uh, this is something that Canada knows how to do, that our officials know how to do. Uh, I would remind people of our experience with COOL, country of origin labeling, uh, where Canada was also prepared to retaliate and we had a very carefully considered list. That was in response to a WTO ruling in our favor. As the Prime Minister says, the consultation period is really, really important. Uh, we expect to get very <coughs> useful feedback from Canadians and we expect to use that period to refine the list. So please, everyone, start giving us feedback. Uh, Canadians who are watching, you can start right now. Uh, as we said, and as the Prime Minister has said, uh, the list has been put together with a few considerations in mind. Uh, one has been to support and defend the Canadian steel and aluminum industries. They are now facing unfair barriers in their exports to the United States. It is appropriate that their U.S. competitors should face equivalent barriers in exporting to Canada. And I'd like to remind Americans who may be watching and listening that Canada accounts for, as the Prime Minister said, roughly half of U.S. steel exports. So that is one consideration. A second consideration, as the Prime Minister has said, is looking carefully at choosing goods for which there are replacements. So. Uh, we've looked to choose goods for which there is a Canadian alternative, which would not face the 25 or 10 percent tariff, or an alternative uh, produced by a country which is not the United States. Uh, and then finally, in putting together the list, we have tried to look for end-use products uh, because we are mindful of the fact that imposing tariffs on products that are part of some kind of a manufacturing chain could impose costs on Canadian companies and make us less efficient. So a lot of thought has gone into it, uh, and I think a lot of thought and a lot of work will go into refining this list in the days to come. Um, a follow-up, as a follow-up, um, given that there's been discussion around your relationship, Prime Minister, with uh, Trump and senior officials likewise, um, did you, in your talks in the last, in recent days, give them advance notice of exactly what you were going to do at the level? And, and if you have, um, why did all those economic arguments that you're making to us fail? You'll have to ask the President about that. Uh, we have made consistent arguments uh, and demonstrated in many different ways the interconnectedness of uh, the Canada and American economies. Um, we expect that in the coming days uh, there will be many members of Congress, many uh, governors uh, who will be making representations directly to the White House on uh, the negative impacts of uh, the measures that uh, the U.S. has put forward and the consequences of the measures the U.S. has put forward. 
Tonda? That, that was the part he didn't answer. Uh, we talked about how uh, difficult this was going to be in terms of a turning point uh, uh, in the Canada-U.S. relationship. Josh Wingrove, Bloomberg. We continue to be uh, open to uh, working on uh, a renewed and modernized NAFTA, and we will continue to uh, sit down at the negotiating table. As I think you uh, you reported on, Josh, there was a um, an offer that I made uh, directly to the president last week uh, to uh, go down to Washington personally uh, with Christia uh, and sit down around a table with the president. Uh, to work out uh, the final details of NAFTA because there was uh, the broad lines of a, of a you know, decent win-win-win deal on the table that I thought required that uh, final uh, deal-making uh, moment. I got a call from uh, Vice President Pence on Tuesday uh, in which it was impressed upon me that there uh, was a precondition uh, to us being able to get together. Um, that Canada would accept a sunset clause for NAFTA. I had to highlight that there was no possibility of any Canadian Prime Minister signing a NAFTA deal uh, that included a five-year sunset clause, um, and uh, obviously the visit didn't happen. So just to be clear, you, you scrapped the visit because you wouldn't agree to a sunset clause, or they scrapped it? Because? The United States said as a precondition to us meeting and negotiating, we would have to accept a sunset clause. I said uh, we could not accept a sunset clause in NAFTA as a precondition to meeting or as any sort of condition, um, but that if they were willing to take that off the precondition list, um, I would be happy to come down. Uh, but that was not something that could ever be acceptable uh, to Canada or, I'm fairly certain, to Mexico uh, in the negotiation of, uh, of a North American Free Trade Agreement. J'ai eu l'opportunité de parler au Président en vendredi passé et j'ai souligné que je pensais qu'on était assez proche d'un accord, que le moment était peut-être venu pour que je m'assoive avec le président à Washington euh, pour euh, finaliser euh, l'ALENA, qui avait euh, l'esquisse euh, d'un très bon accord pour nous tous euh, et euh, que je pensais qu'on pouvait y arriver euh, si on s'assoyait ensemble pendant quelques heures. Il était ouvert à ça, euh, mais mardi, j'ai eu un, un appel du vice-président Pence euh, qui m'a dit qu'ils euh, étaient content et ouvert à ce que je descende, qu'on fasse les négociations. Mais euh, avant que je descende, il fallait que j'accepte euh, que euh, l'ALENA euh, ait une clause crépusculaire, c'est-à-dire qu'à tous les cinq ans, l'ALENA euh, terminerait à moins que les participants choisissent de le réactiver. Euh, C'était et c'est tout à fait inacceptable pour nous. Alors j'ai dit que malheureusement, si c'était une précondition, euh, je ne pouvais pas l'accepter. Euh, et euh, évidemment, nous ne sommes pas, nous ne nous, nous sommes pas rendus à Washington pour euh, euh, faire cette journée de, de négociation. Okay. David Aiken, Global Television. Um, that's very interesting. So I'm trying to digest that uh, bit of news there. Thank you. Um, I'd like to come back a bit to the G7. Um, that uh, I'd like to know what you are going to do to coordinate action with six other or five other partners, I guess, um, to perhaps ramp up some pressure on the United States. We have a G6 plus one essentially right now. So what are you going to do as the host to focus on trade? From the very beginning of the uh, Canadian presidency on the G7, we've been aware that there are issues that uh, there is not consensus or unanimity on uh, G7 partners are, particularly around trade uh, and uh, climate change, for example. Uh, but we also know that there is tremendous value in the seven leading industrial nations in the world uh, coming together. Uh, to talk about shared priorities, about shared challenges, including the shared challenge that we all face in uh, different ways of making sure that the growth we're creating within our economies uh, benefits everyone in our economies. Uh, that's why we put forward a number and a broad range of proposals uh, from 
strengthening women's entrepreneurship, to helping uh, women and girls in developing countries around the world, uh, to concrete action on protecting our oceans from pollution. Uh, to measures around uh, security concerns that are uh, active in the world, uh, from our democracies to uh, nuclear threats. Uh, there are a broad range of elements that we have and do and continue to agree on and work together. There are other elements in which uh, there will be robust discussions around the table. Um, that's one of the points of having a G7, to allow for frank and uh, serious conversations amongst uh, world leaders who uh, serve populations that aren't so dissimilar in their values and approaches. And uh, just uh, like to read <clears throat> something by you that Wilbur Ross said this morning, but you both maybe to comment. He described this as, quote, blips on the radar screen. And he said that, quote, everybody has spats now and again. Every country does. Nothing weird about that. I think everybody will get over this in due course. Prime Minister, Minister Freeland? I think the fact that um, the United States is invoking national security measures against Canada, against its closest allies, friends, and partners in the world, including NATO and NORAD partners, uh, means that this is uh, perhaps more significant than the administration realizes and uh, emphasize, uh, and we will certainly uh, uh, hope to emphasize that by the seriousness with which we take uh, these measures. I can tell you, for Canadian auto workers, for Canadian aluminum workers, for Canadian steel workers, these are not blips. Uh, these are real issues. These are real families who are going to get hurt by this and that on both sides of the border. Christian. Yeah, well, I, I uh, agree 100 percent with what the Prime Minister has just said. Uh, we need to be very clear uh, exactly how absurd this U.S. action is. Uh, this is a specious and unprecedented use of Section 232. Section 232, as the Prime Minister has just said, is a national security consideration. And to use this section, which is meant to give the U.S. the right to defend its national security, something that I think all countries would see as proper, to use it as a way to impose tariffs on steel and aluminum sold to the United States by its closest allies and partners in the world, by its partners in NATO, its partners in NORAD, its partners in the G7. We are partners with the United States in defending South Korea and the Korean Peninsula. Uh, to use a national security consideration as an excuse to impose these tariffs uh, is unprecedented, and it is simply wrong. Uh, I would also just underscore, David, uh, that you know this is not about Canada. This is about the United States and a posture the United States has chosen assume towards the rest of the world, particularly towards its closest friends and allies. These are measures that have been applied not only towards Canada, but towards the EU, towards Mexico. That is a decision the U.S. government has taken, and we believe it is a highly regrettable one, and we've said that directly to our American counterparts. Okay, so we've got only about two minutes left. Uh, six people on the list. If we can have time for one more question, uh, Joël Denis Bellavance de la Presse. Dans quelle mesure le geste de M. Trump sur l'administration aujourd'hui va bousculer l'horaire que vous avez fixé pour le G7 qui doit avoir lieu la semaine prochaine? On s'attendait toujours qu'il y ait des éléments sur lesquels on allait avoir des différents entre euh, différents membres du G7, particulièrement au niveau des changements climatiques et au niveau du commerce international. Euh, on a mis de l'avant euh, un agenda qui a beaucoup d'éléments sur lesquels euh, nous allons être euh, d'accord et nous pouvons faire euh, du bon travail entre nous et pour euh, le monde entier. Mais en même temps, nous savions que nous allions avoir des discussions robustes sur ces sujets-là et d'autres. Et nous, nous, nous allons certainement voir que le G7 continue d'avoir son utilité pour permettre à des discussions franches et, et rigoureuses sur des enjeux de, de préoccupation, pas seulement pour nous en tant que chef, mais pour nos citoyens aussi. Est-ce que c'est possible que vous, votre gouvernement offre 
une aide financière à l'industrie de l'acier ou d'aluminium si euh, la dispute commerciale dure dans le temps? Euh, J'ai été euh, personnellement voir les travailleurs euh, en aluminium au Saguenay, euh, de rencontrer des travailleurs euh, en acier à Hamilton, à, à Regina, à, à, au sault sainte marie euh, pour euh, démontrer mon appui, pour leur rassurer que, et ce, il y a plusieurs mois, euh, quelle que soit la décision euh, finale d'aujourd'hui, nous allions être là pour eux pour les appuyer, pour défendre l'industrie canadienne, pour défendre les travailleurs canadiens et les intérêts des Canadiens. Et nous allons absolument faire ça.